Well, I've got to say this thing was packaged to withstand a hurricane. Look at that. It's indexed so I can remember how to get it back together correctly. So it's all packed nice and well. Cable cut out. There it is. Look at that. The Miller and Kressel V75. Even tells me where the shield and where the caps go. How nice is that? Wow. Most people just wrap it up in a couple of pillow pockets and call it a day. This thing is, look at that, custom fit. Man, very nice. And this is the box with the power transformer, which incidentally I need to work on any Miller and Kressel unit. Incidentally, the customer does believe that this might be the problem. The power transformer itself. I believe he was told somewhere that it has a bad power transformer. So let's get into it. Okay, well out of the box, I got the transformer set up here. I don't have it connected to the main board yet, but I just want to go ahead and measure. You can see there's a red, white, a white, and a solid red coming out. So the red, white, and red are the outer terminals of the secondary of the transformer and the white is the center tap so i just want to measure from the center tap to the red now i realize there is another red but it's a fat red that's the speaker output red here so let's just go to ohms first and i do see 0.9 ohms disregard the 0.2324 because it even reads that with nothing connected it's just a defect of the meter. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. And I see nothing. And I've got power going to it. I'm at about 123 volts AC. There's 125. And unfortunately, I have no current draw whatsoever. So let's measure from the white lead to the red with the white stripe. And I see exactly the same thing. Let's go ahead and verify that we do have 120 volts going to the input leads, that it's not something stupid like a fuse. Over here, there's a fuse right here or a connection at this plug. So I'm gonna get my piercing probes out and we'll go ahead and pierce these leads. And I'll go ahead and do this all in real time. Let's see, well, we'll go ahead and use the black on the black, even though black is hot on AC. That one's pierced. That one's Pierce. Now we can go ahead and unplug these modular leads. And I've got zero volts going into the power transformer. That is an extremely good sign. I'm just gonna kill the AC power and do an ohm check. We should have resistance and we do 5.3 ohms resistance. So there's not much more it can be, a defective power cord or a defective fuse holder at this point. I'm very happy that I see five ohms of resistance on the primary side of the transformer. It's not open. It probably has a thermal fuse in it. It's not open. That's a very good sign. That tells me that at least where I'm pierced on is probably okay. So let's go ahead and unpierce the power transformer at this point. And we'll go ahead and pierce the AC input It's AC, so it really doesn't matter the orientation. And I see 4.3 ohms. Let's go ahead and we'll put it back in AC, power it on. And I do see 130 volts there. Oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, very odd. Well, we didn't have AC voltage on the other side. Let's do that test one more time. Now I'm very perplexed. Maybe I didn't get the lead pierced enough. AC volts, plugged in. Power on, I've got nothing. So I've got 120 volts AC. Sorry, this is off camera. I've got 120 volts AC here. And when I pierce the leads right here, it's perfectly fine. When I'm pierced out here, I've got nothing. So let's go ahead and I'm sorry this was off camera, but we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna put the probes down in here. And you can see I've got 130 volts AC probed in this direction. 
do this in real time. So once again, no trickery. I've got the leads pierced right here. And I've got 0 0.02 volts. So the problem has to be right here. So we're gonna strip back this coating and see what's going on in there. But before I do that, let's turn off the power. I'm just gonna unplug it. Oh, look at that. I see the problem right off the bat. Let me zoom in. Hopefully it'll stay in focus. But here's the female side that actually connects to the power transformer. And I see both leads in it, but look what happens if I twist it just a little bit. Look at how far down that one lead is. If I keep twisting it here, you can see it's been pushed in. Is that all that's wrong with it? God, I hope so. But we'll do a full capacitor check and everything just to make sure everything is on the up and up. But yeah, that has been pushed in. Maybe it didn't get in there from the factory. There should be some little tabs. You can see the tab just barely on the right terminal. It's supposed to lock it so it doesn't come back out. And I don't see the tab on the left side terminal at all. Anyhow, I'm gonna pull this heat shrink off and we'll go forward with this repair. And I think the power transformer is going to be okay. Okay, so just for the heck of it, I've got a suicide cord connected to my piercing probes right here. I've got it plugged into my Variac. I don't have it powered on yet. So let me get my other leads ready here. People have asked what these are. These are Keysight technology. I believe the part number is U1169A. And they are modular probes that have a male banana plug in one end and then these are female banana plugs and it lets you hook up things like piercing probes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, one lead to the white, the other one to the solid red and we'll power this thing on and see if we get anything. And look at that, I see 37.8 volts output. That tells me the power transformer is good. And now to the other side, the red and white. 37.83-ish volts. So I'm thinking this is a rated about 35 volts. Remember I had 130 volts AC going into it. And at the current moment, my meter says about 127. Let's turn it down to about 124, 125. So yeah, 36 volts. And then I should have just over 70 volts on the red, white to the red and I've got 73 volts. Well, I'm gonna say the power transformer is good. I haven't tested it under load yet, but all these tests tell me it's in good shape. So very good news. Let's go ahead and strip off this heat shrink right here and take a look and see what's in there. If we can just reclip that pin, or maybe we need to put different connectors on it and just hardwired, I'm not sure, but one way or the other, we're gonna get this thing going. There's the problem, right there. Let's go ahead and bend the locking tabs out just a little bit. See if I can break another thumbnail. It might be too far. I'm gonna say it wasn't never locked in from the factory. And we've got good solid connection at this point. How's this one doing? This one's perfectly fine. So because they chose to put the MOV right there, I'm gonna have to find something. I'm not sure I have another piece of heat shrink. I could put this one back on it and just wrap it in tape. But I think that's gonna be good. Let me get the other half, the amplifier back over here. We'll just plug it in. And it is very solid now. You can actually see through the transparent where the tab is there and there. They both have the same amount of protrusion. Then you can actually look through, well, not transparent, but translucent. And you can see where this tab is versus this tab right there. Let me see if I've got some heat shrink that's this large that I can re-shrink this up with. Well, unfortunately I didn't have any heat shrink that size, but I did wrap it with some Scotch 33 electrical tape. And I did uh, three, basically three passes, one this direction to the end, one back, and then one to the end again. 
and secured it with some zip ties. I think it's going to be as good or better than the original. I probably could squirt some RTV in there or some hot glue, but I think with this thing being internal most of its life, it's going to be just fine. Let's go ahead and plug it back in and check voltages one more time. So we'll go red to red white to measure both sides and we'll plug in the customer's original cord right here. We'll power this thing on. I'm on AC volts and look at that. I'm seeing 72 and a half volts. Perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and test the rest of the unit just to make sure everything else is in good condition. I'd hate to send it back with this repair and find out that we've got a failing filter cap or another filter cap that's on its way out. Okay, here we go. Speaker is connected. No dummy load this time. Power on. I hear light bass in the background. Oh yeah. There's a lot of bass. Turn it up to 125 hertz. I gotta bring my other speakers in one of these days. Let's go ahead and pause that. And I know I can't show you the speaker right now, but as I turn the bass control up and down, the speaker is pushing in and out. Okay, so here's the speaker. And as you can see, it's kind of just moving in and out at a sub bass frequency. And so if I pause the MP3 player, this is what happens when I turn the control up and down. Let's go ahead and at least shoot some deoxid in here. So that's up all the way. I'm not touching it and it's kind of moving in and out indiscriminately. There's down all the way. So I'm thinking this pot might just be dirty. But nevertheless, when I play it, now that all looks good. I'm not seeing any issues there. So it might just be the pot. If I just barely touch it, you can see how much it jumps in and out. It's moving very slowly. It shouldn't be moving that slowly. There shouldn't be like one hertz. Yeah, I know. I need to bring my good speakers in one of these days. Well, let's just go ahead and pull the amplifier board off here. Shut the AC power off. We'll check all the caps. I don't suspect I'll find any problems because it wasn't really sent in for that. But if we do, we'll go ahead and address them at that point. Incidentally, I thought I'd let you listen to the power off oscillation on this thing. Let me pull my microphone off here. And I'll just get it over here near the speaker. We'll shut the power off. Listen to this. No, that wasn't me. That was the amplifier. Okay, so let's check some caps on this board. Make sure everything's okay before I ship it back. So I see 0 0.02. I'm okay with 0.02. And 0 0.01. I'd like to see 0 0.01 on this one, but 0 0.02 is perfectly fine. If it was up in the... 0 0.04 or higher, I'd want to go ahead and replace it. These are the main 10,000 microfarad filter caps. Uh, this is a 100 at 63, and I see 0.16. I'm good with that. This is a 10 at 63, 0.08. Excellent on that. Another 100 at 63, 0.18. Another 10 at 63, 0.08. Another 100 at 63, 0.19. These are the after Zenerdow dropping capacitors, 0.26 and 0.22. I'm perfectly happy with every capacitor on this board. So we've got one, two, three, four, five of the 100s at 63, and one, two of the 10s at 63, as well as the two AC input caps, 0.02 and 0.01. I'm happy with every capacitor on this board. I'm not going to recommend that we change any caps on this thing. I don't think it needs a recap whatsoever, but I am going to go ahead and shoot some deoxid F5, the fader control cleaner on these pots after I get this board reassembled. Okay, pots have been cleaned, everything's remounted, ready to go. I did add some silicone RTV to those resistors over there, as well as these coupling capacitors. I did test the coupling capacitors and they're all within about 0.04 to 0.08 ohms, perfectly fine for an eight ohm system. 
I did RTV the main filter caps down as well as the 12 volt regulating caps past the Zener diodes, the dropping resistors, every capacitor basically that's going to have a load on it. Now I don't know why they didn't use RTV from the factory but the only thing I can think of is that it takes about six to eight hours to cure. They probably wanted to get these things out on the assembly line quickly and get them boxed up and ready to ship. So hot glue only takes like five minutes to cure. Anyhow, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and retension the Molex connector like I normally do right here. Retention that one pin. We'll go ahead and just add some pretension to these connectors. Make this thing live a long time. So hopefully I won't get in the way here. Just grab a little pair of pliers. And we'll just give it a bit of pretension, just like that. And we'll do the same thing to the other side with a small screwdriver. Remember, don't worry if you go a little bit too far. When you plug it back together, it's going to push it right back out. There we go. Much better than when we started. Let's put it back together and give it a final test. Okay, here we go. All back together. Let's power it up. Red light should light up. Heard a nice thud. Got audio going into it. Yeah, the distortion that you hear is the video lights. They're stamped steel and they do shake with bays. But I'm not getting any of that DC offset when I adjust the volume. So if I turn the MP3 player down, no DC offset now as I turn the controls. working great. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Miller & Kressel V75 Mark II. No power. I think this customer might have had it to a different shop and they diagnosed it as a bad power transformer. Always try to get a second opinion, folks. Always try to get a second opinion. Anyhow, that's going to be it. The repair on the Miller & Kressel V75 Mark II. Very nice unit. I think this customer is going to be very happy. I've got a total of an hour and a half into this unit. Very, very minor repair. We didn't have to recap it. We didn't have to change any switches or pots. Just a nice outcome. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.